from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, spoke up. Leaders of our people and elders, if we must answer today for a good deed done to a cripple and explain how he is restored to health, then you and all the people of Israel must realize that it was done in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene whom you crucified and whom God raised from the dead. In virtue of that name, this man stands before you perfectly well. This Jesus is the stone which was rejected by your builders but has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation in anyone else, for there is no other name in the whole wild, wide world given to men by which we are to be saved. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. At that time, when the eighth day arrived for the circumcision of the child, the name Jesus was given to him. The name which the angel had given him before his conception. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Mass is being offered for all the people of the parish. The uh, Hebrew word for name is linked to another word for breath. And in the scriptures, the breath of the person was the character of the person. So that Adam, his name meaning come, coming from the earth. And the Lord then, as he comes from the earth, breathes into him his character of being made in the image and likeness of God, the prototype of this, the pinnacle of material creation. Another name, all the various names in the scriptures Hebrew names have special meanings to indicate the character of the person, special characteristics or events associated with the plan of God. That's why the name in Scripture is much more significant than the way we use names in popular culture today. You have uh, screen names. Uh, uh, all kinds of password names, so you, got, you got a name for this account, that account, it's all just as if names were meaningless, or names were there to deceive. But we, uh, of course, being rooted in the faith, our attitude towards names, especially our own names, but the names in Scripture should be that of the Scriptures. Hence, um, reverencing the name of Jesus is a meditation on his being and character. Uh, sometimes, you know, when we hear discussions about the holy name, we, we bow in reverence, and that is all part of acknowledging who Jesus is. It's not simply a repetition of a name as if it was a magic incantation or magic formula and uh, one scholar makes the point to pray in the name of Jesus really means to be in accord with his will and his character that if you pray according to the way I would according to my will and the way my being uh, then things will be granted to you. It's not simply, well, I'm going to evoke the name and I'm going to get something. 
And that's a significant thing. So Jesus' name is he saves, coming from the verb to save. His whole being, uh, conception, child in the manger, child growing up, is the mission of the salvation of the human race by dying on the cross and rising from the dead. Hence, to pray in Jesus' name is to be in accord with that whole mission of salvation. The salvation of our own souls in accord with the plan of Jesus Christ. So that's why we pray in the Our Father, um, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is the living manifestation of God's will. Jesus presents in the flesh. Father and his will and the mission that he has assigned to his son and our own mission and destiny. So that this reverence for the name of the Lord is a consistent call to us to live in accordance with the character of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That we become other Christs. And that means taking on what Jesus says is his yoke. Come to me, all you are weary and find life birds, and I will refresh you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. You will find rest for your souls. That yoke is a play on words with the Jewish law, the 612 or 613 commandments, which was considered a yoke on the people's burden, like a thing you put around oxen. Jesus says, well, my yoke is light. My birth is light. So I come, I am God's love. I am God's mercy. I am one who saves. So that this should give a perspective today and the next days and any time we bow our heads, which we do often at Mass and saying prayer, but the bowing of the head and the reverence for the name is not simply a, a pious exercise, but it's our saying to the Lord, your will be done, I want to live according to your ways, Lord, to be Christian, in fact, and not simply, uh, you know, the name Christian. This is then getting into the whole biblical meaning of names that is offered to us today. And then the scriptures remind us there is no other name in which anybody can be saved. Now we live in a world of indifferentism, easy salvation, what the, the Protestant pastor who was heroic, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, said many people live with the idea of cheap grace. And uh, the, the world's view is, well, you know, if, if you have religion, they're all basically the same. And, uh, and it uh, doesn't really make any difference. And everybody's going to go to heaven anyway. God's pretty merciful. Uh, that, that's, the, that's in the cultural air we breathe today. And many are taken over by this, especially in ecumenical discussions. Ecumenical discussions are not meant to be simply everybody sitting there smiling at each other. They're meant to really advance the truth claims that separate one group from the other. And this has been sadly lacking in many of these discussions. So the name of Jesus, his holy name, also recalls the uniqueness of salvation in, in his name. That there's only one person that people could be saved. And we're not talking about one religion is as good as another. We look at truths and, and, and things that perhaps exist in other, other religions. In fact, there, there is 
there's a prayer in the ordinary form of the Mass for December 31st, which is, I don't know where it's, I think it has an ancient lineage. But it says, O oh Lord, in the birth of your Son, in the incarnation of your Son, is the beginning and the perfection of all religion. Now that's an astounding remark. It's basically saying that before God became flesh, there was no religion. And if we meditate on the meaning of religion and salvation, we see, well, that had to be true. Religion is um, allied to the virtue of justice and what is owed to God, the Creator, the Supreme Being. And the human race was incapable of giving to God what he was owed. There were attempts at religion. Attempts because there was the, the inclination and, and then God's revelation about his various covenants with Israel, preparing Israel for the Messiah and so forth. But until God became flesh, the human race had nothing to offer God that was what they would say equal to him, what he deserved, until the offering was he who saves. And then we could say, Lord, we offer sacrifice, here is your son. And then the, the, the prayer said, this is not only the beginning, but it's perfect religion. Not that we are perfect, but that our offering is perfect. It's a, it's a really astounding thing. So when we have Mass, we are, in a sense, proclaiming that oration, that we are practicing true and perfect religion by offering the one whose name is He Saves. And all this then is tied up in, in the devotion to the Holy Name, preached by Blessed John of Vercelli, a Dominican, and St. Bernardine of Siena, a Franciscan, in very, uh, as, as part of their mission to reverence the name of our Lord. Now, of course, this takes on a third dimension. Reverence to the name, attempting to embrace the name by an interior life that's seeking to become Christ-like. There's a counterweight to all the blasphemy of Jesus' name and the sins against the second commandment. We live in a world of blasphemy and sin against the name of Jesus. It's bantered about by comedians. Um, it's disrespected as if mentioning Jesus' name was, was a terrible thing, a curse, a bad word. In many public schools, in many public sectors, if you mention Jesus' name, it causes horror. We can't say that. We can't say that name. So, reverence to this name takes on the, the added dimension of reparation for all this cheapening or this attacks against his name, simply looking to wipe his name out. And giving it the proper reverence and due in our personal lives, and witness, witnessing that name to others. I mean, in many, in many sectors, the name of God is considered offensive. Think, think about that. In, in sectors of our country, if you say, God bless you, you have, you have some folks out there that you would think you told them that you, you were cursing them. This is how ridiculous and evil things have become in some sectors of our country. Now that's also consistent with the view which I mentioned yesterday at Mass of this administration 
that their idea of freedom of religion means you keep it in the four walls of the church. You know, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, that, that word, freedom of religion, means uh, you just keep it in the four walls of the church, but it has no place in public, public square. And we, we could never consent to any of that. So today, it gives us an opportunity to meditate on the meaning of our Christianity, the meaning of our baptism and confirmation, and all the things of, of what an interior life hidden with Christ in God means. And that a person who's doing that will instinctively reverence the name and be drawn into the biblical perspective of, of the seriousness of names. So let us today beg for the graces that in our own personal lives we are people who reverence the name and carry that out in our world. And as we bow our heads and as we mention his name, always in a spirit of reparation for those who blaspheme that name, who discard that name, who trivialize that name and in this way uh, stand for Christ as we continue to celebrate these great days of the Christmas season.